scientists for a long time talked about this degree of warming, two degrees, this threshold of warming. They called it the threshold of catastrophe. And they said we had to do absolutely everything we needed, we could to try to avoid it. I think that gave many people in the public a sense that to the extent that they even understood that threshold, that it was a kind of a worst case scenario. But practically speaking, I think it's about a best case scenario today. And let me just explain what that is, that best case scenario, two degrees Celsius. It would mean scientists expect 153 million additional people dying from air pollution alone. That's death at the scale of 25 holocausts in a best case scenario. It would mean storms and flooding that used to hit once a century would be expected in most parts of the world every single year. It would mean that cities in South Asia and the Middle East that are today home to 10 or 12 million people would be so hot in summer that you often couldn't go outside without risking heat stroke or death. And the UN believes that at just two degrees, again, at kind of a best case scenario, we would be dealing with at least 200 million climate refugees. Now, personally, I think that number is a little bit high, but even if you divide it in half, you still get 100 times as many refugees as left Syria and went to Europe and totally scrambled European politics as a result, 100 times as many. The UN actually says it's possible we could have 1 billion of those climate refugees just by 2050, 1 billion being the number of people who live today in North and South America combined. This is an incredibly alarming situation that we're in. All of those um, details that I just did, all of those scenarios I just described, describe a best case climate future. How much worse it gets from there is a matter of what we do today. And I don't really know the answer to how much worse it will get from there. The first line of my book is it's much, it's worse, much worse than you think. I actually feel less that way today in 2020 than I did when I finished the manuscript in September of 2018, because there has been an incredible awakening, a political awakening on this issue all across the world. When I turned my manuscript in, I had not heard of Greta Thunberg. Nobody in the world had. She had just started striking outside the Swedish parliament, a lonely 15 year old by herself, friendless, socially awkward. She had just started a few weeks ago. The UN hadn't released its landmark 1.5 degree report, which really raised the alarm from the scientific community in an unprecedented way. We hadn't seen Extinction Rebellion announce itself. In the US, we hadn't seen the Sunrise Movement. We hadn't elected Alexand Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to Congress. The Green New Deal was the name of the third party candidate in the 2016 elections campaign platform, Jill Stein. Today, it is a central issue in American Congress, 